Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the TD Power Systems Limited Q4 FY23 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. Now I hand over the conference to Mr. Nikhil Kumar, Managing Director from TD Power. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you once again for joining us today on our earnings call. I trust all of you would have received our results in the investor presentation. Now, I will move on to discuss with you CDPS's financial performance of the year ended 31st March 2023. Standalone. Our full year total income on standalone basis was 8.43 billion versus 7.36 billion in the same period. In the previous year, an increase of 15%. Profit after tax and comprehensive income was 80, 884 million versus a profit of 532 million in the same period in the previous year, an increase of 56%. We are pleased to inform you that this is the highest tax on standalone basis for the full quarter and full year since the inception of our company. Full year manufacturing revenues was 8.16 billion versus 7.04 billion, EBITDA margins for the full year were 16.58% including other operational income. Exports and deemed exports contributed to 58% of the generative business. The manufacturing order book including Turkey operations stands at 13.8 billion, out of which 5.61 billion is the generative business, 8.08 billion is the railway business which is executable over the next five years, and 0.11 billion for the Turkey business. Export and deemed exports, excluding the railway business, is 52%. Order inflow, uh, order inflow has been very strong and resilient, and we're very, very pleased to report an increase of 36%, sorry, 38% in the order inflow compared to the previous year. Order inflow for PDPS for the current year, uh, sorry, for the last year was uh, 8.37 billion compared to 6.05 billion of the previous year. Full year order inflow, including Turkey business, was followed. Uh, TDPS India was uh, 8.37 billion, TDPS Turkey 0.08, total is 8.45 versus the previous year 6.4. Order inflow from direct and deemed exports is 4.43 billion, which is an increase of 20% over the previous year. Full year project business revenue was 335 million versus 173 million, same period last year. But we would like one second like to reiterate that, that the company is no longer into the project business, and henceforward, uh, all orders put by Japan branch will be classified into the manufacturing segment, which consists mainly of uh, generator sales, generator spare service, and other related jobs. As a matter of clarification, the sale of 283 million out of the total of 335 million described above is mainly the generative business, service, and space. Order book from the project business stands at 106 million, which is now classified as generative business from this point onwards. Console, on the console basis, our full year total income, including exceptional income, is 8.93 billion versus 8.22 billion the same period in the previous year, an increase of 9%. Profit after tax, including comprehensive and exceptional income, is 945 million, including a write-back in DSPS, a subsidiary of 6.28 million, 
and profit from the sale of land of 7.16 million versus a profit of 614 million in the same period uh, in the previous year. In the previous year, we had right back in our subsidiary company uh, in DSPS of 76 million. Our control order book is 13.91 billion. We continue to have a strong cash position of 1.89 billion. The company has also generated an operating cash flow of 886 million during the year on a consult basis. The major part of it has been used to pay back the working capital loan balance towards payment of dividends and creditors, compared to 109 million the previous year. The company is now debt free, both long term and short term. Anyway, the company did not have any long term debt previously. We plan to invest around 25 crores in this current year on automation, productivity improvements, and software for our design department. Order book market situation and guidance team turbine generators. We have seen a huge jump in the order book in this segment on a year on year basis of about 55%. Orders have increased both from domestic market as well as export market across the board. The domestic market is seeing a big revival in capex and we are seeing demand broadly across all sectors. In the export market, we are seeing the same factors playing out as we have been describing in the past few quarters. Macro factors continue to drive the business, move to renewables, waste to heat energy, garbage burning plants, etc. Increased demand for electricity from electric automobiles and in the future, domestic heating, which will have to be changed to electricity, will provide long-term sustained demand for new power plants in this, in this segment. Gas engines, we continue to have robust orders from both our engine customers, and this will ensure sustained demand in this segment for this current financial year. Recently, we won a big order to supply 20 generators to Ireland from, from one of our engine customers. Gas turbines, this segment has a big potential for growth for KBS, and we're actively bidding for more projects with OEMs wherever they are approved. Now, hydro. Hydro also, we're seeing a massive growth in the business in this year compared to the last year. We will see a growth of about 50 to 70 percent of our business in this year compared to the previous year. The main markets are Nepal, Vietnam, and countries in Europe. Once again, the push to with renewables is driving the business in hydro. Motorists, we are pleased to announce the first order from Nuclear Power Corporation. We have also received the first order for submersible motors. This is a new product for TDPS. Submersible motors are used extensively in municipalities, in sewage and water supply systems. We are also very pleased to order uh, to announce a large order from Mega Engineering for 5 into 40 megawatt synchronous motors to be delivered in Q2 and Q3 this year. With this supply, we will establish ourselves firmly in the segment and open up the market for further business. Railway. Next month, the six-month trial of our motors will be completed with the Indian Railways. We hope everything will function well until the end of next month. There are still a few more tests to be completed after the six-month period is completed, and then we have to complete a significant amount of documentation. We expect to finish everything by Q3, and next year we can see a good ramp up in this business. As I said repeatedly, the goal is to make this business about a 100 crore business in the next two years. New projects from Indian Railway, we are waiting eagerly for the results, and hopefully our um, uh, partner customer will be successful to win a few of the upcoming tenders from Indian Railways. Turkey. We are also happy to announce that the Turkish government has revised the incentives for locally made generators and made it very attractive for end users to buy made in Turkey generators. This means the market will open up once again. It may take some time after the elections. The market will open up since Turkey is a power shortage country. I expect this year to be, this current year to be very subdued in terms of sales, but we will see the pickup of order booking and from next year onwards we will see the execution picking up once again. Now I'll finally come to the market conditions or to the guidance. Uh, as we have been uh, guiding in our previous earnings calls, we are projecting growth of at least 20% in this current year, with upside potential to reach around 1,000 crores in the manufacturing business. As of now, we see manufacturing sales to be in the region of 970 crores definite, 
and 1,000 crores target. And the reality could be somewhere in between. We will see an improvement in EBITDA margin based on operational leverage. In H1, we plan to have around 47% of our sales, around 470 crores, out of which 210 crores will be in Q1 and 260 crores will be in Q2. This is because we have a large number of machines, sorry, uh, we have a number of large machines to be delivered in Q2, and these will be in production in Q1. As I mentioned earlier, we have the five big motors of 40 megawatts which will be delivered in Q2 and some in Q3, and those will be in production. They're already in production, and therefore uh, our sales will be slightly lower in Q1, but will pick up dramatically in Q2 onwards. This brings me to the end of my initial remarks. I'll now be happy to address any queries, questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Nitin Dharmavat from Aurum Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so my first question is about uh, the raw material price trend. Uh, some time ago, we had uh, significant uh, raw material pressure, and then uh, there was some price correction that had happened. So I wanted to take uh, your view on the current uh, raw material price trend, and uh, uh, is it uh, uh, going to help us, or uh, we are having some challenges over there? Uh, we uh, we have already booked and uh, put, uh, bought majority of our major raw materials for this current financial year. Um, we have seen that the prices of steel, for example, have been going up recently once again, and uh, we, 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 the company has taken a decision to, to buy the material for the rest of the year to avoid uh, exposure to further price increases. So as far as our purchases are concerned and our margin protection is concerned, we have taken necessary steps to ensure that we will not be affected by any swings in the material prices in this current financial year. Perfect. Uh, you mentioned about uh, the 20% growth, uh, I suppose, in the manufacturing business. So what is the consolidated growth that you are planning for the year? Uh, what does mean? It would be around 20%, around the same, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. Okay, so it is the same 20% for the overall business as well, right? Yes. Yeah. And what is the EBITDA that you are targeting for the overall business? We have mentioned. Yeah, we have. There, there is going to be an increase in the EBITDA margin. We are. Uh, we will give the exact guidance in the next quarter, but uh, we are uh, very. We are. We are saying it's going to increase on the current quarter. The current EBITDA margin will it be sustainable in the current uh, in the financial year as well? That's it. It's going to increase, right? So. Yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, my final question is, uh, what is the volume growth that we are expecting in financial year 24? Uh, around around 20%. Around 20%. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. I'm wishing you best. Thank, Thank you. you. We have our next question from the line of Andre Purshottam from Kogaito Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers, sir. Uh, this is a bit of a follow-up question from the previous one. Uh, if you look at the, um, the results last year, your uh, <clears throat> gross profit margins have increased considerably, but your other costs, employee, other expenses, etc., have increased slightly as a compared uh, as a percentage of sales. I think from 16.8 to 17.2, if I'm not mistaken. Now, this suggests that you have not taken advantage of operating leverage this year, but going forward. Again, with your guidance of greater EBITDA margins, that I suggest, that I, I'm assuming you don't have continued gross profit margin improvement, can we also see some operating leverage 
and taking in. Uh, just wanted to hear your thoughts on this. Okay, one last take, can you take this question, please? Yes, okay. sir. There has been no improvement in the gross contribution because of the pass on uh, of the cost to the customers. And uh, operating costs are uh, increasing because we need to, you know, uh, give some increases in the salary and all. So, uh, going forward, uh, uh, going forward, will these costs, the employee costs and other expenses, uh, move slower than the, the increase in revenue? They may not increase in the same proportion as the sales will increase, but there will be some increase. If the sales are increasing by 20%, the operating expenses may increase by 12%, 13%. Uh, this is Sangeeta Andre's partner. I had a follow-on question that you know, guided for the 20% volume value growth for FI24. Now, given where the cycle is, do you think this kind of growth can be sustained in the medium term, say three to five years? No, that's a good question, and uh, I don't want to. I don't want to be overly optimistic in saying that this kind of growth will be sustainable. Uh, so, but as far as our company is concerned, you know, we have a, a strategy to sustain the growth based on a diversification of product and diversification of market. So. Today we see, you know, order increases taking place by 38 percent and 48 percent. That kind of a sustainable, that that kind of a huge growth may not be. It may flatten to about 20 25 percent. This is my expectation. Um, but the large part of this increase in growth is also taking place because you know we have diversified our product range and we're working in different markets with new customers across the world. Um, so we can expect, on a very conservative basis, I'm saying. Uh, we can expect something like 17.5% uh, compounded growth to definitely take place because the company is having a target to keep the growth rate around between 20 to 25%. But in terms of uh, giving a commitment, we have always said that we're giving a commitment around 17.5% compounded growth. 17 and a half compounded growth over, say, three years. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, okay. And could you give us a But the upside potential is there because they're giving a conservative commitment based on what they can actually do. Right, right. And could you give a flavor as to what is prompting, um, you know, different uh, uh, clients across different geographies to buy their products from you? Is it part of the Europe plus one or China plus one or what is the thinking? And uh, is that likely to then convert into a structural trend? No, we are not. Uh, you see, this, your, this China plus one is not. It's, it's not something that you know. We are we're not affected by this China plus one. China plus one business is when you have large companies setting up shop in India uh, versus setting up shop in in China and then manufacturing getting contract manufacturing done or uh, setting up their own plants so that they can manufacture and then export to uh, various parts of the world. That is China, that is a China plus one. We are talking about, we, in our company, we have built up our own brand name and we're selling our products and we have been doing this for the past 10 years. This is not something that we started yesterday. We started in the past two years once this uh, Ukraine war has started and once the China plus one uh, has become, you know, a big, uh, uh, a big news item. We have been in the export market for the past 10 years, intensively growing our business, building up our own brand name, uh, and uh, creating references across the world. And uh, so our story is a, is a totally different story. There is a huge market for electric generators in general, and uh, TDPS is probably one of probably the only company coming from a low cost country and competing against established European majors or American majors in their home markets. Uh, we still have a long way to go. We have a very low market share and we are constantly trying to improve our uh, penetration in the market and grow our business internationally. So I see, plus the macro factors that I talked about in terms of uh, increased electricity demand, 
I see that there's a the, uh, good potential for growth for us in the future also. Thank you. We will request you to come back in the queue for follow-up questions. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to answer queries from all participants, kindly restrict your questions to two at a time. You may join back the queue for follow-up questions. We have a next question from the line of Himanshu Upadhyay from O3 PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Himanshu. How are you? Yeah. Uh, so my first question was, uh, we have uh, guided for revenue something like 1,000 crores, okay? And if you look at uh, order book, it is 590 crores beside railway. And railway, if you do, let's say, even 150, it reaches 700 to 750. So do you think a significant, uh, means we have a significant pipeline, which is not, uh, uh, let's say, ordered to us, but a significant place where we are... Uh, uh, tender or means we are participating and we are very optimistic on that and or it is your some understanding with OEMs who are uh, where uh, means the cycle is much shorter can, can you elaborate on that means? yeah we have a delivery cycle of between three months to 12 months so if you look at our past track record you know we do it depends on it depends on the, on the year but we do uh, between 200 to 300 crores of book and bill in the, in the, in, in, in a, within the current year, depending on the year. So we are very confident that this balance to 50 crores will be easily made up. And one and, thing uh, uh, we have we have not uh, declared the you know uh, April April results. And also, we have had a very strong order booking in April. Uh, the order booking continues to be very very strong in May. Uh, of course, we're not declared those those numbers, but uh, you can, I can just tell the market that it's been very strong and it's in line with the kind of guidance that I'm projecting uh, to the market at this point of time. Okay, and one more thing. Uh, see, the motors business, currently we are winning project-level businesses, okay? But is there any thought process that we also start getting OEM businesses, so let's say a large... Uh, uh, pump company for which we can be in supplier or a compressor company or uh, let's say whatever means uh, the applications are very wide for large. So is there any opportunity that we can directly be a supplier to a large OEM for which for whom motor may not be the core uh, product and what is the opportunity size in such a business? Because in earlier, even in generators, we were uh, not with so many OEMs, okay. But eventually, we tagged along with some of the OEMs, and it gave us good business, okay. So, what is the path for motors business or large synchronous motors to move from here on? I, you know, I don't think that we're going to be. You know, of course, all these. Motors finally will go to a, will be, will be coupled to a pump or will be coupled to a compressor. It's, it is anyway linked to an OEM business. Some of these businesses are, 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 are we, we sell to the OEM, some of them we sell directly to the end user, depending on whether the customer wants to split the order or doesn't want to split the order. And okay. we are still focusing, we are focusing not on, we are focusing on the particular applications. And we're focusing on a particular size, with the, not size, but the, you know, the motors are larger in size. And uh, we are focusing on motors which are above four or five megawatt in, in size. And uh, so we are being quite specific as to what we're going after. And we're not going after uh, the motor business below that these sizes because it is a very highly competitive and highly populated market below these sizes. So we will continue to work on this strategy to work on larger size motors and in niche markets where, where we have a good chance to display our uh, capabilities and, uh, and, and get better prices. One last question on this only. You see in generators, no? Uh, what would be our revenue from OEMs? So, uh, let's say, uh, engine manufacturer or uh, let's say gas engine manufacturer or a diesel engine manufacturer. 
currently versus uh, some five or seven years back. So how big is that uh, proportion of business? And is it much shorter cycle than the project businesses, what we may do on the uh, generators space directly? No, I don't understand your question completely, but I I the generator business is mainly an OEM business and continues to be mainly an OEM business. In terms of percentages, there's no change in what it was five, seven years ago and what it is today. So what I was asking no, was... So to be OEM, to be end user. Okay, okay. Okay, so thank you from my side. I'll join back in queue for further query. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Rohit from I Thought PMS. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, uh, am I audible? Yes. 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 Yeah. Hi, Nikhil. Uh, congratulations on very good. Hi. Uh, so, Nikhil, a couple of questions. Uh, uh, recently, I was reading that uh, uh, geothermal is actually uh, a very uh, hot space right now in the U.S. and what's happening in Europe is somewhat similarly also happening in the U.S. I remember you had mentioned a few quarters back about uh, also trying to build up that uh, segment, uh, uh, which, is, which is probably right, uh, largely in Turkey. Uh, so we want to hear anything if you are know, seeing something uh, in that market as well, and if that market also can be a decent opportunity I'm for us, sorry, like Sanjara, what I Rohit, can you use your handset, please? It is not audible. Sure. Hello. Uh, I just repeat my question. I, 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 I could hear what he said. It's fine. Go on, Rohit. Okay. Okay. So I just wanted to hear uh, your view that if, if geothermal also could be a big vertical beyond Turkey. Uh, and and uh, so that was my first question, actually. Yeah, the geothermal market as we see it is about 500 or 600 megawatts per year right now. Uh, could be 800 megawatts per year. And uh, we are actively bidding with the OEM customers and getting some orders, Rohit. We're not major player in this market as yet in terms of being you know having a certain specific market share a lot of space for us to grow but uh, we are working with all the top OEMs in the world and we we will get more business you know, where we they got business from Japan they got business from from Turkey they got business from uh, Central America they got some business also now recently they got a geothermal order from Germany so we are we are getting we're getting breakthrough orders. It's going to take a little bit more time for us to establish ourselves to get a big market share within this segment on a worldwide basis, but we're constantly plugging away at it. You got it. That's very uh, good to hear. Okay. Uh, also, you think on you, you mentioned about uh, 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 another new product, a tomatoes motor, right? Uh, if you can just talk a bit about. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Motors are, you know, motors which, you know, I mean, obviously they're submerged within the, within the liquid yeah. that they're supposed to pump out, and uh, it's a very special application. We are we are actually working on the larger size motors uh, where there is no domestic manufacturer today, and mm -hmm. most of the motors are imported. So we are um, excited to be in this segment. All the municipalities require these across India will require these motors for wastewater treatment, for sewage handling, also for freshwater pumping. So we are it's a big market. We have got the first order, and uh, let's see how it goes. But we are excited to be in this space. Got it. And I mean, would you want to sort of? Talk a bit about what's the size of the market and what you want to sort of go after. At this point of time, we are let 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 uh, you know because once I say this is so many crores, the next question is how much share you plan to get from it. So uh, I, I'll 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 take I'll take these questions a little bit later once we deliver the other set of motors. Sure. And my last question was little. Uh, I mean, uh, I would also like to commend you on your balance sheet because I think it's grown very well this year and. 
our inventory has uh, reduced in, and also like uh, this is a very good show on the overall cash flow. So I mean, actually, it's really good. Uh, and uh, so, so I mean, we are spending 25 crores, you said, uh, so, and we have a significant amount of cash. So any thought, thoughts on how do you want to sort of uh, use cash uh, going forward in this year as we are also projecting good uh, good uh, growth for this year and, and also for the next couple of years. You know, Rohit, we eventually will have to put a third plant and uh, whether we have to start the work, uh, start the work partially like buy some you know, land and start the work this year or next year, it, you know, it depends on how the market and, uh, uh, you know, grows. If we're going to see this 35, 40 percent, you know, ordering flow sustainable for the next two, three years, then we have to put the plant faster than what we had earlier planned. So we are uh, getting that, and then depending on how big we want the new plant to be. So we are uh, keeping the money aside right now for the new plant. Sure, it will make sense. Thank you very much, and all the very best to be able to. Yeah. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Dhanil Desai from Turtle Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Nikhil. Good morning. Uh, so, Good morning. My first, uh, so the first question is, uh, you know, uh, so this submersible motor thing, uh, uh, so in terms of uh, supply, in terms of customer, do we directly supply to the municipalities or is it like on a, to the MCC contract? We supply to the pump manufacturers. So the pump manufacturer. Okay, so your receivables are with the pump manufacturer. That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 And typically, who do we compete with? Uh, I mean, who are the major players in this segment? Yeah, as I said, most of the larger motors are imported and uh, imported from Europe or from Korea. Okay. So no, no major Indian player uh, in this market. Okay. Uh, second thing, uh, I think you said that we got this uh, order from Mega. I, I I assume it is for synchronous motor test. Uh, so uh, yes. can you elaborate? Yeah. So can you elaborate on that? I mean, uh, you know, well, uh, if this, I assume that this is more of a project to project business and and it's difficult to estimate the market size it keeps on varying every year. But, uh, uh, you know, how do you see this? Uh, are there many more projects in the pipeline or uh, on the bidding stage? Some, some color on that. Yeah, this, uh, this is a short cycle order from Mega. Um, it's, we, we have to deliver uh, these motors to them within next, uh, next quarter. So it's good for us also because it gives us a chance to put these 40 megawatt machines, large machines into the market and establish our credentials and get us a supply record. So we are we're taking the challenge to do it and we're doing it. The market is, the pipeline is incredibly large. There are a huge number of projects coming up. It could be hundreds of crores. Of course, it's, as you said, it, you know, year by year basis, you could see differences in, in the total amount of business. But right now, the pipeline is extremely huge. And uh, business is coming from, most of the inquiries are coming from Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, and Karnataka, and Madhya Pradesh. So we, we expect this to be a really good business for us. And we take, you know, we're going step by step. Once we put the 40 megawatt motors into operation, I think. We'll, we'll establish ourselves firmly as a very serious player in this market. Yeah. So this is mainly for pumped hydro projects. That's excellent. So, uh, okay. pump, so pumping, this is for irrigation, pumping projects. Okay. And last question on this NPC and order that we got. So any, so are we kind of, you know, in terms of certification, capability, et cetera, are we only planning to address the domestic uh, of our market, or are we also aiming to tap the international market in this? No, we are not uh, planning to go outside India for nuclear. Uh, we there's uh, we are there's a lot of business within India for nuclear power application, and we are going to stick to. Uh, and I don't know whether it's even possible for us to supply to. Uh, nuclear power plant internationally, given all the restrictions and regulations. So, at the moment, we are focusing entirely on the Indian business. 
Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Ankit Gupta from Bamboo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations to you, Nikhil, and the entire team of TD for fantastic head of numbers. The transformation in terms of uh, you know the way we have diversified our uh, business for the past few years is commendable. Uh, so, uh, Nikhil, on the domestic side, if you can talk about, we have seen a very strong inflow in terms of order uh, orders for this quarter. You know, like this has and last year when you uh, used to talk about the commentary in order inflow, you used to be more bullish on the export orders. But you know, the last quarter we have seen very strong commentary, and even in your T uh, uh, TV interview, you talked about very strong uh, order in, uh, pipeline for, from the uh, domestic business. So, if you can talk about, you know, what is happening uh, on the domestic side and how do you see order inflows on the domestic uh, side over the next uh, year or two? Yeah, um, Vinay, uh, are you on the call? Can you answer this question? Vinay is the head of our global uh, sales and marketing. Sure, sure. Yeah, hi, Vinay. Mr. Higdip, Hello. Yeah, when you please take this question. Uh, Mr. Egden, sorry, we're not able to hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So, domestic market, as I said, this is still a bullish market, and uh, we are getting very good market, you know, orders from the mainly uh, on the renewable segments, uh, biomass power plants, garbage burning power plants. Recently, we got a single order of uh, seven machines of eight megawatt for a biomass power plant uh, from an Indian customer. And also, uh, there is a government joint venture uh, refinery company from which uh, our OEM has already got three into 48, uh, sorry, two into 48 megawatt and three into 37 megawatt, very big order. So, there is a real uh, uh, boom in the market still going on. and. Uh, you know, uh, you know, domestic market requirement is uh, really as good as the uh, export market for us. We are expecting a very good business from the domestic market from our two major OEMs. Sure. So you expect the pipeline to remain by point over the next few years, at least. Yeah, yeah. I think that the traffic cycle has just has just started in India. You know, we are just it's not we are we are the early stages of this traffic cycle, and uh, the potential for our country to grow from where we are today, you know, three, three, three and a half trillion dollar economy to five trillion and then ten trillion dollar economy, what we're planning in the next decade or so, is entirely feasible that we will have massive expansion, massive uh, build up of infrastructure. And uh, earlier, um, you know, we talked a little bit about China plus one. Yeah, of course, PDPS is not a big beneficiary of China Plus. We're not in the China Plus one, but China Plus one is a real thing which is happening in the market. And a number of, a lot of people are putting up manufacturing facilities, going outsourcing out of India. So there's going to be a big demand for uh, putting up the infrastructure, uh, including a big demand for electricity. So I am. A big, I am very, very bullish about the domestic market. Of course, the export market opportunity for TDPS is also huge. It's not that you know that's going to go away. And we have spent the past decade in you know building up the market, so we're not going to take our eyes out of it. But but we are you know in the domestic market, this is our home market, and we have a leading position in this market. So uh, we are going to be a beneficiary of this market when this market grows the way it's growing right now. I, I really strongly feel that we are uh, at the beginning of a very large, uh, long cycle in India. Sure, sure. That, that's good to hear. Uh, on the, my second question was on you know the new uh, product side. You know, uh, uh, you talked about synchronous motors, but uh, what about you know the new uh, segments like uh, railways where we have it entered directly, as well as you know our association with the large OEM partner. Uh, you know, I think the uh, the new tender. Is now been pushed back to August of this year. So, if you can talk about uh, railway standalone, railway uh, business with our uh, OEM partner, as well as you know the refurbishment business, uh, both on wind as well as you know the refurbishment of our own uh, generators. 
So I think I already spoke in my opening commentary about the railway business. Maybe you missed it. Um, as I said, the, the, the trial period for these motors, which you know, has a mountain and locomotive, will end. The six month period will be over at the end of June. So hopefully, and we have no incidents until for the next one and a half months. And then, then after that, there will be a significant amount of documentation. There's still a few more tests to be done. Um, I feel that this will go on to up to Q3 or so, and then, and then we should have the official approval. We can start bidding for bidding for the projects with on a level level one category or level two category uh, supplier. Um, we plan to make this business into a hundred crore business in two years. We are taking it, you know, going step by step. It's, it will ramp up. We will see some. We will see the effects. We will see some effects of it next year. And definitely the year after that, so we're going to ramp up this business. The Indian railways are producing more and more locomotives with a big demand. So I don't see a problem from a demand point of view. On the new projects from Indian railways, I, I said yes, we are waiting for the results. Uh, some of the tenders have been postponed. So what to do? We have to wait and see who is going to win. Sure. And on the refurbishment side, you know, how are uh, things shaping up? Yeah, refurbishment side, things are going as for plan. We are uh, going to hit our target, what we have said, 6-7% uh, uh, of sales. So we will we will do that this year. And uh, I, I have nothing to report. I think things are going as for plan. Sure. You were also planning to disclose the market about uh, a, a, a one or two products that you were working on. So. Uh, you know anything? I just, I just said we have introduced the submersible motor. Okay, 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 okay. So that is part of that. Okay, okay. Thank you, Nishu. Thank, Thank you. you. We have our next question from the line of Deepesh Agarwal from UTI AMC. Please go ahead. We are Grafman team and congrats for good number. Uh, first of the bookkeeping question, can you help us understand what is the size of our order book on the motor side? Varlashmi, do you have a number with you? Wait a minute, sir. It's around, I think it's around 100 crores, including mega. 100 crores. Okay, okay. And uh, last year, the same number would be... Uh, Last year, was not, I don't remember the number right now. Understood. And what would be the other railway revenue for the year? Sorry, what would be the? Our traction motor revenue for the year? It would be 130 crores. 130 crores, okay. okay. Uh, the, uh, the other question is actually uh, in some, one of the comments you mentioned that you may look to expand the capacity. Uh, but if my understanding is correct, uh, your revenue potential from existing capacity would be to the extent of uh, 1500 odd crores? I said it would be around 1300 crore or 1400 crore. And, uh, you know, those would depend on the mix and where the products are, uh, what, what kind of products they're getting. So, uh, if we're going to grow at this rate, as I just mentioned that we have to set aside the money, money for a new plant, and we have to think about the new plant at a faster rate okay. compared to what we were thinking earlier. Uh, okay. So that's the thing. That's the it's just not thinking at this point of time that if things are going at this way, then we will put the new plant earlier. Okay. And uh, uh, any any rough thoughts if we go for an expansion? What would be the kind of capex? Would it be green field, ground field? And what will be our world investment and uh, timeline? It will be around uh, 150 crores. 150 crores. Okay. Okay. Uh, see, uh, uh, the uh, last question is on the margin. Uh, there is a sharp improvement in the margin in line with your guidance. Uh, do you, uh, what is the trajectory you uh, foresee going ahead on the margin front? So we will see the margins improving incrementally as we improve the capacity utilization. Um, when we see when we have when we put the third plant, the margins could fall back a little bit, maybe to 16% levels when we when we 
in those first years of putting the new plant and then once you fill the new plant margin will go back to 17 18 percent levels is what we're expecting so uh, i think the margins will will be in the range you can say 16.5 to 17.5 levels you will come out sure sure thank you and all the best thank you, thank you. We have our next question from the line of Apurva from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity. So, first thing on the clarification, so is it possible for you to uh, bifurcate manufacturing into generator and the motor segments? Yes, it is possible. So, can you help me with the number for the current year and uh, for next year when we are guiding for maybe 970 to 1050 crores of manufacturing revenue? We don't, we don't do that when we, you know, we don't want to, you know, there's a lot of variability that takes place during the year and uh, we need to have the flexibility of, you know, saying if some business is proposal which may have come, does not come, something else comes and takes its place. So we want we prefer to keep the flexibility within the management and uh, uh, report the manufacturing business as a block. Of course, we can get some general guidance numbers next quarter, but at this point of time, I am hesitant to put the number out right now. So I do understand, but the point here is, okay, like the motor is a relatively new business for us compared to generators. And as of now, what yeah. we can understand is, okay, currently traction motor is the major revenue contributor when it comes to the motor segment. So what is for the synchronous and index and, and what could be uh, your growth guidance? So what factors you are building in for 20, 25% growth rate? So that would just, uh, we want to understand. Yeah, that's a good point. I totally understand. I will put the numbers and continue the numbers out next quarter. But as I already mentioned in the, in a, to an earlier question, we have around 100 crores of pending orders from, for the motor side. So that should give a, a reasonable indication of which way we're heading. Great, sir. So we'll look out for that number in next quarter. And so my next question is on the hydro. It's a clarification. So I think in your opening remark, you said the hydro would grow maybe uh, 60 to 70 percent in the current year. So is that my understanding right? Yes, it is right. So, sir, what was that number in FY23? Because historically, it has the number is 20 to 25 percent of our total revenue comes from the hydro. So you are saying. Uh, 60 to 70 percent growth on that base, correct? Yeah, we don't uh, give the segment wise breakup to that extent. So, we do give in the, uh, uh, our annual report. So, we don't have the FR23 annual report, but if you look at historical numbers, so maybe 20 25 percentage of our revenue comes from hydro. That's what we can understand from the annual report. That's why I'm just clarifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you want me to give an absolute number? Yes, sir, if it is possible for FR23. Uh, I don't have the number with me right now, but it is, uh, okay, so it will, it will be, it will be somewhere in the region of uh, 170, 180 crores hydro. Got it. Sir. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Alicia Mahavla from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, just a clarification. Um, the guidance has been given on manufacturing uh, for manufacturing revenue for 24,000 crores. They're saying this is generators plus motors. Yeah, this is total Alicia. So understood. On the margin side, last two quarters gross margins have been slightly higher than the 30-31% that we always said was sustainable. They're closer to 33% plus. Uh, do we see any moderation on the gross margin side going forward? I think there won't be a moderation. I think, you know, so I think that if, if you, so quarter to quarter, it could be, it could vary a little bit. But uh, we, you can say it is definitely going to be 32 percent, and the management is trying to do better than that. Okay, so the 32 percent we did for the full year looks sustainable, and operating usage will help us improve. Understood. Understood. 
Okay, and just one last question. Uh, while I know we're not um, explicitly calling out anything on the motor side, but overall the margins would be in line with what the competition is likely better. Overall, yes. In line with what the competition. And the seventeen percent, uh, and the seventeen percent EBITDA margin that we're talking about is including other income, including other operating yeah, operational operational income. We're not talking about the treasury income. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah, great. Thank you. So Thank you. The operational income, what we have, what we have included, the major factor would be the foreign exchange gain, which uh, has come as a result of our forward-looking decisions that we took last year. And uh, if you remember, last year the euro was uh, had gone as low as. 77, 78 to the rupee, and we had forward booking, uh, you know, done in the region of 89, 90 rupees. So we, we, we during that time when the euro was very weak, we had significant foreign exchange gain. This year it will be different because the euro is already around 90, 89, 90, and our, our forward bookings are also around the same level. So. This year, what's going to happen is that the, it will be reflected in the sales itself because we'll be invoicing at the euro at 89.90 and not at 78 as what we did last year. So the income will will show up on the on the on the invoice value, and we won't have a huge foreign exchange gains in this current year as we had in the previous year. Uh, that's a little bit long explanation, but I think it's necessary to put this out. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Sham Maheshwari from Aditya Birla Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations to the team on a good set of numbers. Uh, I have one question and it's uh, mostly on understanding the business. So uh, when we sell our generators or, or the motors that we are trying to sell now, uh, do we sell them directly to the OEMs or do we also have some sales coming from uh, you know, distributors or channel partners? Ladies and gentlemen, we've lost the connection for Mr. Nikhil Kumar. Request you to stay connected, please. Uh, Mr. Nikhil Kumar, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, I think I got uh, disconnected and back on the call. Yes. Uh, should I repeat my question? Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, yes, sir. So I just wanted to understand about our uh, sales strategy. So we do uh, do we directly sell our products to the OEMs or uh, do we also have sales coming from the channel partners or distributors? So our sales are, you know, when when we sell our generators in the market, you know, this it, it, it ends up being used in a large industrial complex or an IPP. Uh, let's say, let's say there's a international customer who's putting up a 50 megawatt biomass plant. So the sales will take place. The customer will buy a steam turbine generator set. So so. He will, he will specify which steam turbine he wants, which generator he wants. He, there's, there's normally an engineering consultant involved, and there's also normally also an EPC contractor who's involved. They also have to be convinced that the generator makes what they're offering to the customer um, is acceptable to them. So for us, as a generator manufacturer, we have to get the OEM approval, EPC contractor approval, consultant approval, and also end user approval. So these are the multiple levels of uh, approvals, and this is our sales process where we have to go out there in the market and get these approvals before we can win a project. We have to be on these approved vendor list, and that is a fundamental part of our sales strategy to be on as many approvals as possible internationally. Domestically, uh, you know, we have a very high market share and we have a, a huge installed base, so we don't have to fight to be on an approved vendor list. Uh, we grow when the market grows. 
understood sir uh, so just to follow up on that so as you mentioned uh, you know we are trying to expand into other geographies particularly europe uh, in terms of hydro uh, turbines uh, so are you facing any stigma being a local uh, indian manufacturer there or are there any challenges that you see uh, you know forthcoming in the future when you trying to increase our base there I think earlier in this call, I have mentioned that we have been working on the international markets for the past 10 years or 12 years. And yes, uh, we have faced the challenges of establishing an uh, 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 Indian-made generator uh, in the international market. And we have, we have, we have worked to overcome that, uh, that challenge and we have installed more than 700 machines in Europe right now, for example. There's still many parts of the market that still, we, that still don't automatically accept an Indian main generator and we still have to work towards getting acceptance in many, many places. And on the other hand, they're also accepted in many places. So we do, we're seeing our business also improve quite, quite a lot uh, in, in areas that we are, you know, because we have been approved in many, many areas. It's, it's, we still have a low market share, we have a long way to go, we're constantly working on improving our business internationally. So that's, that's where we are today. Understood, sir. Uh, thanks a lot for answering my question. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of VP Rajesh from Banyan Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, Nikhil. This is a fantastic year. Uh, my first question was regarding Jalti. Uh, Mr. Rajesh, can you use your handset mode, please? Uh, is it better now? Yes. Yeah, yeah, but Rajesh, I can hear you. You can go ahead. Okay, great. So my first question, Nikhil, was regarding Turkey. So in your guidance of this uh, thousand plus crores in uh, manufacturing, how much are you giving uh, Turkey business will come back? The Turkey will be negligible this year. Okay, so that's more like a fifty crore uh, around could be around ten crores. Okay. And and then the second question is. Uh, uh, regarding the project business, so you know, uh, I mean, it does add to our revenues, but uh, on the EBITDA side, it's uh, sort of uh, not really performing to the expectations. So, how do you think about that? So, the project business, if we talk about the pure project business, we do about five, six years per year, which is consisting of spare parts, some overhauling, and and we're just, you know, uh, taking care of the existing supplies that we've made in the past 20 years, but not doing any new projects. And uh, uh, we have a few people who run this business, and it's profitable, and we will continue to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. All, all other questions have been answered, so thanks. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Ria Mehta from Equitas. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, congratulations and good Hello. Numbers. Hello. Yeah, thank you. Uh, congratulations thank you. and great set of numbers. Uh, my first question is in regard to the railway business. Uh, so currently, I think 805 crore order book we have. So I would just want to know the breakup of the uh, business derived from uh, in partnership with Alstom and uh, independent railway business of ours. No, so the railway business is divided into two parts. One is the direct business that we have. Okay, one is we already have an existing order on 800 plus crores with Alstom, which is executable in the next five years. That's an existing contract which you run for the next five years. Then we are trying to get approval with the Indian Railways to supply motors to them for the business that for the locomotives that Indian Railways themselves produce. That we are in the approval stage, and I think that we will we need to first get the approval that will take a little bit more time and then we will start directly supplying the Indian Railways. The third part of it is new projects where the Indian Railways are putting out tenders for somebody else to make the locomotives, like uh, 9,000 horsepower or 12,000 horsepower locomotives, where the uh, traction motors may or may not be outsourced. Like in the case of Siemens, one to 9,000, it's not sure what they want to do, but they may make it themselves. Uh, so these are the three major parts of the market as far as they're concerned. And what, so we have, we have what we have right now, and then we are working aggressively on what we can control, which is the business with the Indian Railways. 
And the third part of it, you know, the new projects, we don't know what, what's going to happen. It's out of our control. If our, if, if some, if our customer, uh, partner customer wins, then we have a good chance of winning some of that business. If they don't win, then we don't get it. So that's how it's going to play out. Okay, so majorly uh, for uh, right now till Q3 FY24, till we don't get the approvals in place, it will be morely driven by the existing order book which we have. This year only is mainly driven by the existing order book for sure. Okay, got it. Uh, my second question is in regards to uh, what the so basically for the interview you said that we have around 900 to 1000 crore order and so for the next coming year so uh, what do you mean break up of which segments do you see that coming from uh, like a more broader definition apart from the manufacturing segment wise break up we don't give okay uh, if you could just give me uh, directionally also the visibility and L1 how is it like how much is motors or generators and how is exports? I will give the pick up of motors next quarter as I committed earlier in the call. Uh, it's, it's important. I, I understood that we you know, need to see where the growth is coming from. I will give the numbers next quarter. Okay. I've said that the number is right now is somewhere around 100 crores of business uh, pending order for motors. Um, but I can't give the Expected order inflow breakup segment wise. I can't do that. Okay. It's giving away too much of competitive information also. Okay, got it, got it. And uh, in terms of cash flow utilization, our operating cash flow has increased almost 88 crores this year. And um, saying the 25 crores of CapEx, we are marked for automation, etc. Uh, so, what would we doing with the cash flow and what capital allocation strategies are we planning to go for? Uh, I, I mentioned that, you know, we we will set aside money for a new plant. And uh, I mentioned that if things are going and if things are going at this pace, then the third plant is going to come earlier than what I expected. So, we wait a couple of quarters, but the setting aside the money for that and uh, if things are going to continue to run at this pace, like a new 38, 40 percent, then then of course we need to have a new plant much earlier than what like what much earlier than what that I, I earlier I've been talking about in the past one one and a half years. Uh, we we just want to be ready for it, and we want to be able to respond immediately, you know, and so that we're not uh, left with the situation we're running short of capacity. So we're preparing ourselves for the eventuality that we have to work much faster on this compared to what we were thinking a little bit earlier. And for setting up of the new plant, we would take how much time and uh, by when do we expect? Uh, it would take uh, nine months to a year, but okay. nine months to a year, and uh, um, we, I mentioned it could be 150 crores of investment. Right, and uh, earlier we were expecting this to come or uh, start in FI25 um, correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry, can you repeat that question? Uh, so, early, just correct me if I'm wrong. Early, we were planning that we would uh, set up a new factory by FI25. Like, we'll start by then. So, let me know. Yeah, I'm not giving a date when we're going to start right now, also. I'm just saying that we're going to satisfy the money for an eventuality that we have to uh, put a factory earlier than what I expected. That's, that's all I'm saying at this point of time. And uh, the question was about capital allocation. Okay. And the answer is that money is going to be set aside for setting up the new plant. When I am not, I'm not putting the date for it right now. And in terms of we, uh, the national election for coming up next year, generally we see that there is a lag of activities happening around that period. Do you foresee something like that happening next year? I, I don't think that the story, Catholic story, is going to be derailed. Uh, I, I I don't think so, but uh, you know, I mean, the political situation in the country is important to have a long-term 
this long term story which we have been talking about you know if we talk about what are the factors that can derail our story you yeah, know of course political the political side of it can derail the story so it's important that we for the country i'm saying that the story continues okay thank you that's it from my side yeah. thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraints that was the last question for today i now hand over the call to mr nikhil kumar for closing comments over to you sir yeah thank you very much uh, for a very engaging commentary and uh, discussion today i look forward to being in touch with all of you and seeing you all in some investor conference or the other or face to face sometime in the near future thank you very much on behalf of td power systems limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may not disconnect your lines <laughs>